Welcome to today's resolution presentation. So this is the official resolution and uh, I shall read from it to commemorate those that helped to develop it. A government and its leaders are here to look at the immediate, but also to look at the big picture. A part of looking at that big picture is to plan for a successful future. A successful future means developing ways, smart ways that will uplift our community and will provide us more opportunity. It also means protecting what is special about Guahan or Guam, which is part of our identity. It's part of our quality of life and it's a strong part of our economy. <clears throat> I've been proud to meet experts <clears throat> who work within the government of Guam. They are at the forefront of safeguarding our ocean resources, the ones who are here today, for traditional and commercial fishing, for recreation, for tourism, and for so much more. Guam is very fortunate to have these experts and others, such as the ones who are joining us here today. They help provide the data and reviewed this resolution that is meant to call for protection of our dolphins and our whales, which has so many cascading effects that reach us all the way to our reefs and our shorelines. This presentation is to recognize their contributions to the community and to thank them personally on behalf of myself and the rest of the legislature uh, and government for their continuing work. So for the resolution itself, it is resolution number 365-35LS. And it was introduced by myself, Senator Therese M. Terlahi, Sabina Flores Perez, Talina Cruz Nelson, Clinton E. Rigel, Joe S. Sanagastin, Regine Biscoli, William M. Castro, Tello T. Tidegui, Amanda L. Shelton, and Tina Rose Munya Barnes. It is relative to Protehi E. Mambadzenesiha, urging the U.S. Navy to, in identified habitats, cease its use of active sonar, torpedo countermeasures, and in water explosives that take or harm marine mammals to use passive sonar to detect the presence of marine mammals and provide all information as declared necessary by the government of Guam in order to determine boundaries of habitat areas of beaked whales and other cetaceans. Be it resolved by E. Minatrensai Cinco Nala has in Guahan, whereas the Mariana Islands and their surrounding waters our homelands and rich ancestral resources for the indigenous Chamorros of Guahan and the Northern Mariana Islands. Understanding that within the Northern Mariana Islands, they are also lands and waters with special connections and history to Rafalawash or Carolinians. Additionally, they are treasured areas for others that call the archipelago home. And the Mariana Islands are a part of the Micronesian of Polynesia diversity hotspot with high plant and animal endemism. In 2015, 23 species were listed on the Endangered Species Act. It is important to protect this biodiversity and their habitats as they are more vulnerable to extinction because of their smaller ranges. And in the Mariana Islands, plants and animals have adopted and evolved to occur in specific ecosystems. Similarly, the Chamorro people who have existed in these homeland islands for millennia have learned and adapted to use and to live alongside these resources in sustainable ways. These lengthy connections to the island's biodiversity, they are deep, powerful, and part of the Chamorro culture and identity. And whereas our economy is heavily tied to the health and well being of our environments, including that of our marine ecosystems. In both Guam and the Northern Mariana Islands, 
In addition to fishing industries and sustainable fishing practices, visitors and locals spend their time and money to experience the rich biodiversity of our waters through swimming, snorkeling, diving, and participating in boat tours, fishing tours, submarine tours, and dolphin watching tours. Tourism, as we know, is a main industry in the Marianas, contributing a $1.47 billion annual industry for Guam that accounts to 20,436 jobs representing 60% of our island's business revenues. Highlighting the significant role that marine life plays within the tourism industry, in 2019 alone, 14 companies were identified as providing tours that included dolphin watching with 340,000 tourists participating in dolphin watching, which made up significant portions of their sightseeing activities. And the Mariana Island waters contain numerous types of cetaceans, meaning aquatic mammals, including whale, dolphin, and porpoise species. For example, within the Marianas over the last several years, there have been documented scientific sightings of species such as the bottlenose dolphin, spinner dolphin, pantropic spotted dolphin, rough tooth dolphin, pygmy killer whale, false killer whales, short finned pilot whales, dwarf sperm whales, sperm whales, humpback whales, and curviers uh, beaked whales, and Blaineville's beaked whales, among others, uh, several of which there are five which are endangered. Further, scientists have concluded that there is an indication that the Mariana Islands are an important habitat for beaked whales. This determination is based on the detection of the acoustic activity of three beaked whale species, including the Curvier's beaked whale, Blaineville's beaked whale, and an unidentified beaked whale species, noted as possibly being the ginkgo toothed whale. Scientists have just recently made the significant conclusion that the waters within the Marianne Islands are a missing, meaning previously unknown, breeding ground for the endangered humpback whale the extent of which is currently being determined by examining areas from Guahan to Pagan. Likewise, there is some evidence that suggests sperm whales may raise their young near the Mariana Islands, as there has been a documented newborn sperm whale found off the coast of Agate, with its umbilical cord still attached. Whereas the National Marine Fisheries Service received a request from the U.S. Navy to take marine mammals incidental to training and testing activities conducted in the Mariana Islands. Training and testing study area, wherein the U.S. Navy is seeking a letter of authorization for its proposal to incidentally take marine mammals during specified activities. So for those of us that don't understand the term take, According to the Marine Mammal Protection Act, take is defined as to harass, hunt, capture, or kill, or attempt to harass, hunt, capture, or kill any marine mammal, and is similarly defined by the Endangered Species Act to harass, harm, pursue, hunt, shoot, wound, kill, trap, capture, or collect, or to attempt to engage in any such conduct. And for sonar specifically, sonar is sound, navigation, and ranging. It is the generic name for technology used to locate objects underwater. Two types of sonar systems exist, passive and active. In passive sonar, the operator listens to the emissions of sound. In active sonar, the system emits a pulse of sound to which the operator then listens for echoes and a growing concern among scientists and others is that the powerful effects of naval sonar on marine life, as they can lead to strong, potentially lethal effects, such as stranding, as well as a range of behavioral response, scaling from low to high severity. Beaked whales are not yet well understood. They are a family of 23 species of deep living cetaceans. Further, compared to other cetacean species, 
beaked whales are reported to be more vulnerable to severe and sometimes fatal responses to mid-frequency active sonar. Additionally, a recent assessment of the status of baleen whales worldwide informs us that the humpback whales in the Western North Pacific had the greatest need of assessment and that their numbers are currently calculated to be below historic levels. At the same time, studies are concluding that naval sonar can disrupt vital behaviors such as lunging and feeding. In humpback whales, when the sonar operates in close proximity to the whales, and that behavior can remain disrupted after the exposure has concluded. Between 1962 and 2006, not a single beaked whale stranding was reported for the Marianas Archipelago. The Marine Mammal Protection Act defines a stranded animal as a marine mammal that is dead and located on a beach or a shore, or a marine mammal that is alive and is on a beach or a shore and is unable to return to the water. In either regard, it is detrimental for the whales that end up stranded. In stark contrast to those decades of having no stranding, from August 2007 to January 2019, eight beaked whale stranding events of 10 to 11 individuals altogether were reported on Guam and Saipan. Half of the events were associated with reported naval operations. With the further discovery that not all naval operations, including sonar, are publicly reported. And perhaps an unknown number of strandings are linked to reported these unreported naval operations using active sonar. So with all of that, be it resolved that e Menetrensai Cinco Nala Hesla Turin Guahan does hereby on behalf of the people of Guam call upon the U.S. Navy as the U.S. Navy has agreed to do in the Hawaii Southern Corridor, the Hawaii Southern California Training and Testing Study Area, in areas identified by the government of Guam as habitat for beaked whales and other cetaceans to not use active sonar torpedo countermeasures such as the Aselson Pizar or conduct other trainings that take or inadvertently harm whales, dolphins, and other marine mammals, such as the use of in-water explosives for, in, for training and testing activities, and shall require that all surface vessels use extreme caution and proceed at a safe speed so they can take proper and effective action to avoid a collision with any sighted object or disturbance and can be stopped within a distance appropriate to the prevailing circumstances and conditions. And be it further resolved that E. Menetrensai Cinco Nalhas, the Turin Guahan, does hereby on behalf of the people of Guahan, calls upon the U.S. Navy prior to conducting any active sonar activity or using torpedo countermeasures or in water explosives or carrying out any other training that takes or inadvertently harm whales and dolphins and other marine mammals to conduct passive sonar as a means of detecting the presence of marine mammals and to commit to not carry out any active sonar or conduct other training that inadvertently harms whales, dolphins, and other marine mammals. Be it also resolved that E. Menetrentai Cinco Nalahas Latur and Guahan does hereby on behalf of the people of Guam, recognizing that many whale species demonstrate a seasonal abundance and a spatial variability around Guam, calls upon the US Navy during these times and in these areas determined by the government of Guam as those in which marine mammals can be expected to minimize or eliminate sonar testing using torpedo countermeasures or conduct other training that take or inadvertently harm whales, dolphins, and other marine mammals, such as the use of in-water explosives for training and testing activities, and shall require that all surface vessels to use extreme caution and proceed at a safe speed. 
that E. Minatrente Cinco Nalas Latouring Guahan does hereby on behalf of the people of Guam call upon the U.S. Navy to, if there are any injuries or deaths to marine mammals, provide all information as declared necessary by the government of Guam so that the government of Guam is adequately equipped to review the actions that may have led to injuries or deaths, and further, depending on the government of Guam's findings, to work closely with the government of Guam to adjust the boundaries of habitat areas of, ha of beaked whales and other cetaceans so that they are more accurately delineated. And be it further resolved that the speaker certify and that the legislative secretary attest to the adoption hereof and that copies of the same be thereafter transmitted to the Honorable Lourdes A. Leon Guerrero, E. Magahagan Guahan, the Honorable Michael F. Q. Sinicolis, Guam's delegate to the U.S. House of Representatives, and Honorable Gregorio Kalili Camacho Sablon, the Northern Mariana Islands delegate to the U.S. House of Representatives, the Honorable Mark T. Esper, Secretary of the U.S. Department of Defense, the Honorable Kenneth J. Braithwaite, Secretary of the U.S. Department of the Navy, the Honorable David L. Bernhardt, Secretary of the Department of the Interior, Rear Admiral John Minoni, Commander of the U.S. Naval Forces, Marianas, Mr. Chris Oliver, Assistant Administrator of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Fisheries, the Senate Committee on Armed Services, the Senate Committee on Energy and Natural Resources, the Senate Committee on Environment and Public Works, the House Committee on Arms, Armed Services, the House Committee on Natural Resources, and the House Committee on Oversight and Reform. This was duly and regularly adopted by E. Menachentai Cinco Nala Hessler Turin Guahan on the first day of December 2020. So with that, I thank everybody's patience for reading through most of the resolution. There's more information in there if anybody wants to look it up. And I just wanna announce that I will be very pleased and honored to be able to provide official copies of these to uh, Brent Tibbetts with the Department of Agriculture, to Edwin Rages with the uh, Bureau of Statistics and Plans. He is the administrator of the Coastal Management Program and to Mallory Morgan, who also works with the Bureau of Statistics and Plans and who is currently working on a safety plan for the recreational use of our reefs and our waters. I will also be sending official copies to Congressa or Congresswoman Sheila Babauta in the Northern Mariana Islands. She came and testified at our hearing and was very, um, very supportive. And uh, we need to work together as an archipelago and she is cognizant of this. And so I really appreciate her reaching across the waters to come and testify for a resolution that affects us all. And uh, an official copy will also be sent to our Commonwealth which is a group in the Northern Mariana Islands that is set up to protect the resources and the community <clears throat> of the Northern Mariana Islands. And again, it's important that both of us on both sides of the political divide work together to save our resources that we share in common. And especially that means those that are in the water, uh, such as our marine mammals, our Mambazanasiha, and that we work together to protect them. Um, I'd like to see if Senator Therese Cherlahi would like to offer any remarks before we close for today. No, I uh, thank you very much, Senator um, Kelly. I would just like to thank you for your work on this resolution and all of those who contributed to it uh, when it was discussed in the session hall uh, many people who were watching that day called me to say they were not aware that uh, the Marianas was a special place for these types of whales. And so they learned a lot from this resolution. And uh, so I wanna just commend you for your efforts to, to make sure that uh, we understand our environment. We are aware of the, the harm that comes to our environment and what the sources might be and, and that we act. 
and we advocate to protect it whenever we can. So Situs Maasi to all of those who participated and helped us to get this through. Situs Maasi. And I want to say undunkaluna Sizuus Masi to everyone here and everyone who participated and was a co-sponsor. And I especially want to thank uh, Senator Therese Terlahi. She was very important in guiding me to the final version of this resolution, uh, giving me advice as to what was important to highlight and how this resolution would best serve the people of Guam. And so I am very, very grateful for that. Um, is there anybody else who would like to speak? I know Mallory is here. Uh, did Mallory want to mention any final words before we conclude? She's good. Okay, so I thank everybody for tuning in. I thank again everybody for their support. Uh, it meant everything in being able to get this resolution into its final form. It was so important to have the scientific understandings uh, validated and supported and the data that everybody provided and the review that they provided. And really, it helps us understand what it is that we have that is important for us to protect for the health and well-being of our community. I thought that there were just a couple of whale species uh, and, and dolphin species in our area, but there are perhaps as many as 24 or 26 of those species that we're aware of. And we are just now understanding the significance of the Mariana Islands to them. We are significant to them. We can continue to develop uh, whale watching industries uh, or other possibilities of interacting with them. There are stories that seafarers have to share with us about their interactions with them. And those must have been true for the thousands of years that Chamorros have lived here. So with that, uh, the work is not done, but I, I thank everybody for being here for this presentation and for being part of this chapter of this work. Sidhuas Maasi and Happy New Year.